Let's talk about how we can create some really interesting velocity fields using a node that no one really talks about. I'll start off by creating a geometry node and I want to just bring in the model that I ended up using for the final project. So I'm going to use a file node for this. And this geometry by default is way too big and it's also rotated. So let's use a transform node. Make this a more reasonable scale. And if I hold the control key and I drag this rotation wheel, we can rotate this geometry in increments. So let's rotate this by 90 degrees on the x-axis. And I want to also just use a match size node to bring this geometry to the center of the world. And let's set this justify y to min. Now, since this is a very heavy geometry to work with, I'm going to use a poly reduce node. And let's set this to 25%. Something like this. And then I can go ahead and just output this geometry with a null node. And let's just jump back up to the OBJ level. Now let's go ahead and create another geometry node. And I'm going to call this velocity fields. Dive inside. And this is where we are going to be creating the velocity field and also do some particle simulation. So I'm going to bring our geometry with an object merge just navigate to the null we just created and the node i would like to use to create this velocity field is called the vdb potential flow node and what this node does is it takes a surface vdb and a velocity vdb and it computes how air is going to flow around that object so let's start off by turning this geometry into a surface vdb I'm going to use a VDB from polygons. Resolution of 005 worked fine for me. I'm going to check fill interior and let's also give this a padding of 10. And we can also go ahead and create a velocity VDB using a regular VDB node. Let's call this VEL. Make it a vector float volume. And I'm just going to reference the voxel size from the first volume to this one. So let's just copy and paste as relative reference. As we can see, we still have no values in here. That's because we need to activate this. So let's use a VDB activate node and plug the first volume in the second input. And I have to set this node to reference. And now we can see that we have our VDB showing up and it's based on the bounding box of this first volume. What we can also do to give our velocity field a bit more room is use a, another VDB activate. And let's just set the expand to five voxels. So we can see we basically just expanded the bounding box of this volume by five voxels. So it's a bit bigger. So let's just go ahead and merge these two volumes together. I'm going to press Alt and click to get a merge node. And let's plug both of these into the first input of this node. Now, if I go ahead and middle mouse click over this node, we can see that this has generated an entirely new field for us called FlowVel. And this is the velocity field that we are interested in. So let's go ahead and inside of this node, just make the Vel VDB we created just be the velocity VDB. Leave iterations and tolerance at default settings, and I'll set the dilation voxels to 20. The background velocity, this is basically the direction of the airflow. So this is set to one on the x-axis in by default, and this is fine in our case. Now, if you would like to use a custom velocity field for this, you would have to turn off the background velocity here. And then you could just go ahead and create your own velocity field using a volume wrangle or a volume VOP right here. And the VDB potential flow would take this custom velocity field into consideration. But the default values are fine in our case. So let's go ahead and delete the volume VOP. And let's just re-enable this background velocity. Now, seeing as the only thing we are actually interested in is this flow VEL field here. Let's just use a blast node set to delete non-selected. And let's remove everything except for this one. Let's also use a name node and make the name be Vel. Now, in order to visualize this velocity field, I can use a bound node. Give this a points from volume. 
maybe increase the point count a bit and give this some jitter. And if I plug both of these into a volume trail, we can see that this is our velocity field. And it's already looking really, really cool. But let's talk about how we can make this even cooler. So what I would like to do is create a volume VOP right here. And in the second input, let's plug the original collision VDB we created earlier. And I'm also going to press Shift and S just to get this different node wire style. And we can go ahead and just dive inside of our volume VOP. Let's delete this density export and I'm going to bind and also bind export our velocity. So let's create a bind, make this a vector. Like this. And from the OP input two here, I'm going to create a volume gradient. Let's connect the position to the sample pos. And I would like to compute the cross product of this volume gradient and our velocity. So let's create a cross product node and put the volume gradient as the second vector. So this is our result. And you could, on, you could use this if you would like to, to advect some particles and it would look really cool if this is the type of effect you're going for. But what I would like to do is do a double cross product. So let's copy paste this cross node. And the input one is going to be that first cross product. And let's plug that into the bell. And this is what we get. We have a velocity field that is shaped and it's bending around our model and it's converging in the back here. And this is the velocity field I would like to use to advect our particles. You could honestly just render these lines. I mean, you could get some cool abstract renders out of this. I mean, I'm very interested to see what you guys are able to get from this technique. Let's dive back up. Finally, I would like to create a volume velocity node. And I'm going to use this volume velocity node just to add some curl noise to our velocity volume. So this is way too much. I'm going to reduce the scale to 0.1. Swirl size to 0.15. And that should be good. Now let's go ahead and just set up our particle simulation. So I'm going to copy this object merge here, paste it down here. So we have our initial geometry, which we will be emitting particles from. Let's create a pop network. And I'm going to plug the velocity field in the second input. And we can dive inside. First thing I can do is go into this pop source, just turn off this guide here. And increase the birth rate to something like 250,000. And I also would like to create a pop advect by volumes node. Set this to be the second context geometry. And usually when we have these really interesting velocity fields, like we do in this case, I usually set this to update position. And we could also just use this final velocity update here and set the advection method to trace midpoint. Something else I always do with the particle simulation is to come into this pop solver. And let's, if we don't have any collisions in the simulation, I just turn off enable collision detection because this is going to create a lot of unnecessary attributes for us, which is just going to be a waste of disk space. Now let's try to hit play and see what we have. And we can see that this is not working that well. And the reason, the first reason for this is because the velocity scale is way too high. So let's just reduce this a bit. Something like this is more reasonable. And if we zoom in, we can actually see that we have a lot of particles that are not moving. And the reason for that is because when we spawn particles upon this surface, those particles are not going to be inside of our velocity field by default. So the first thing we can do to help this a bit is use a peak node. Let's just give this a small peak, something like this, and see if this is any better. And we can see that a lot more of our particles are moving and are inside of the velocity field. And something else I like to do while we are just modifying the source, let's create a point wrangle. And I usually like to set the life attribute just on the geometry itself. So I have prepared a code for this. 
line of code. And this is going to set the life to be random values between 0.5 and 0.75, because now the particles, they were living for too long. So this is a little bit better. And I can also go ahead and add some colors to these particles. And I'm going to do this using the adjust color node attribute adjust color. And let's make this be based off a noise. And let's make this a grayscale ramp with a element size of 0.1. And I also would like to just make this animated. So if we play this, we can see that we now have colors on our particles. And the reason this still isn't looking very good, I mean, it's looking fine, but the particles are getting stuck while they are traveling along the velocity field. And we can fix this again by using this initial collision VDB. Let's plug this into the third input. And I would also just like to use a reshape STF, have this set at dilate, and let's dilate this by maybe two. And this is going to be basically the same as what we did here with the peak node. So let's dive back inside of our popnet. And I'm basically going to use this collision VDB to nudge the particles back out whenever they get stuck. So let's create a point wrangle and in the inputs tab, let's set input two to be the third context geometry, which is the collision VDB. And again, I have prepared some code for this. So I'm going to copy paste that. And let's make this a bit bigger so you can you guys can see. And basically what this code is saying is that if the particle is inside of the collision VDB, just push it outwards. So by doing this, we can see that we no longer have that many points getting stuck. And let's also just come into this cube here, right click and choose pixels for our particle visualization. And we can see that we have a really cool velocity field. And the final thing I would like to fix about this is that if we look closely, we have a lot of banding in these kind of areas. And I think the reason for this is because the velocity field is a little bit harsh. So let's go back up and before the volume velocity node, let's create a VDB smooth. Set this to Gaussian. And I'm going to check this use world space radius units make this 0 0.0015 and the iterations will be set to 2. And if we play this, we can see that we have basically fixed all of those bending issues. In the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can render these particles using Karma and also how we can composite this.